Last week on Tipsy Gypsy, we shared with you a brief history of our sailing past, introduced you to our new sailboat, and gave a sneak peek at the interior. We had lots of projects to complete off camera, but still enjoyed Mackinac City before our official launch. Our first goal was to cruise around the Mackinac Bridge and make our way to Mackinac Island. All right, it's really windy up here, but I'm at the bow of the boat and we are going under the Mackinac Bridge. Here's a little look. Our first trip aboard Tipsy Gypsy was great. We weren't sailing, but we got to trial run all the equipment and get an idea of how she rides. We launched on May 6th, and because we were in northern Michigan, that meant it was cold. Very, very cold. Done with work for the day. Yeah. Well, for a couple hours at least. <laughs> I went shopping. 
Theron still works while we're traveling, but even though he worked each day on the island, we were able to enjoy more things than we had ever done before. Even with the cold, it didn't hold us up at all. This meant less people on the island, and it gave us a complimentary slip for the entire week. We spent our week exploring restaurants, hiking, and biking, as well as going to all the attractions that the island has to offer. Now, a quick history of Mackinac Island. Before Europeans began exploration of the area, Mackinac Island was home to an Adawa Native American tribe who considered the island to be the sacred home of the Great Spirit. According to legend, Mackinac Island was created by the Great Hare Mishabu and was the first land to appear after the recession of the Great Flood. A mission was founded for the Native Americans on Mackinac Island in 1670, but was later moved to St. Ignace by the missionary and explorer Jacques Marquette. The island was a valuable position for the Great Lakes fur trade, leading to the establishment of Fort Mackinac by the British during the Revolutionary War. Mackinac Island became a popular tourist destination after the Civil War. In 1875, it became the second national park. In the 1880s, the Grand Hotel was built, and soon after, wealthy industrialists built summer cottages along the island's bluffs for extended stays, and souvenir shops began to pop up. All of the federal land, including Fort Mackinac, became Mackinac Island State Park, Michigan's first state park, after it was given to the state of Michigan in 1895. A historical ban on motor vehicles was introduced in 1898, and 1901 due to concerns for the health and safety of the island's residents and horses. This ban continues to the present with exceptions only for emergency and construction vehicles. Here we are. The only boat in the marina. The nice part of being on an island is that it's hard to get lost. We spent most of our free time together exploring the wilderness and hiking to the historic landmarks. One of our favorite parts is always riding our bikes. This one was a eight mile loop around the island. We are hiking to Sugarloaf Rock. Been hiking for about a half hour. We saw Skull Cave, but it was nothing worth showing. <laughs> it was cool, it was on the way, so we saw it. Here is Sugarloaf Rock. Theron is taking the lead. Whew, it's getting a little steep now. Some better lighting. It's so tall, it's made out of all limestone, Theron? I think so too. There's a really cool entrance. Well, to a cave right there, but you'd need a ladder to get up there. And you can't see through it. You can see through it right there, but the entrance is on the other side. I'll show you. Up there. 
We saw an old photograph with the ladder going up, and that's where they would go up to hang out. Might be their own little hideaway. Now it looks like there's a bunch of stairs that we have to climb over there. Let's do this. Point, Lookout, and Fort Holmes. We are headed to the other fort of Mackinac, which is Fort Holmes. At this point, Theron was attempting to name all the freshwater islands in the distance. It's windy, I don't know how much you'll be able to hear from us, but... Now for the long trek back. Hmm. Went to Skull Cave, went to Point Lookout, went to Fort Holmes, went to oh, Fort Mackinac. It's a bat box. Where? Oh, cool. A bat box. We went to our croc. We went to well, like if we go lots of things. Okay. City. We'll get to the Grand Hotel. Okay, let's go towards the city. 
Wait, we didn't get any footage from the Fort Mackinac tour we went on yesterday. Nope. Personally guided, we did not pay for a tour, but we did pay to get in there and it was really cool. It also gives you access to the art museum, which we checked out this morning. Also very cool. Probably shouldn't have filmed there anyway, so just getting used to all this crap. Parade grounds. <laughs> Going to the hotel. in for free. Just kidding. So on this road, after 6 p.m., you can't be out here if you're a lady unless you're wearing a dress or men must wear a jacket and tie. Yep. So we we're headed out of here before we get arrested Scooting on out of here. the dress code. Yeah, right. So many people are coming out. Like, no one is dressed up. It's too cold to be dressed up. Although, I would definitely follow that attire rule if I was staying there because it'd be fun anyway. Wearing a coat. I probably wouldn't leave the hotel if I was staying there because it costs so much money. <laughs> like, is there, are there rooms with kitchens in it and, or is there room service? I'm not leaving. Ten dollar charge. Oh well, I don't think it would have been worth it. You're right, Aaron. Ten dollars a beer each is two beers each. Yep. And it's more worth it. Uh, people are so friendly here. Everyone says hi. And you say hi to everyone too. Just taking a quick walk down by the water because it does look pretty wild right now. Not too bad, but for the lake it is. It breaks off right there because of that brick wall, which is kind of nice, but pretty, pretty wavy. Look at all these bikes. Everybody rides their bike. Plus the round island lighthouses in the background and it's pretty much my favorite. Look at that. Some wild waters right now. Good thing we're not sailing until tomorrow. And I'm not even sure if we're gonna be sailing, but maybe. And then it's all calm right over there. We're going to be like tonight around the sun. Yeah. I can't get more too loud, so. Cheers. Cheers, Leah. Are you going to be here in the morning? Yeah. I am. Let's go out, Lady. I gotta go. About to leave Magna Island tomorrow morning and on to La Chanel Island. It'll be fun. Cannot wait. It'll be freaking cold. It's gonna be real cold. Maybe yeah. a chilly day tomorrow. Chilly sail. Got gloves? I do. Got a hat? I do. We're all set. Got a scarf. I got, got a sweater. Dodger. I got a coat. I got a pants. We won't have a heater. Lots of preparation. The wind is gonna be... Before we could officially leave Mackinac Island, we of course had to get some drone footage.
We loved our visit to Mackinac Island, but it was time to mosey on up to the Lachino Islands. These islands are east of the Mackinac Bridge along the northern shore of Lake Huron. 36 islands make up this area and provide sheltered channels and historic harbors for boaters and explorers. We first stopped by Government Island to enjoy an amazing anchorage with an extremely calm sunset and then this gorgeous sunrise. Dead flies everywhere. Ew. This block here and cover it with glue. And then we're going to put it here. Then we're going to take this block here and put goop around here. And we're going to put this here. And then you're going to put a bolt through each hole. Okay. And I'm going to crawl down below and wipe up any extra goop that comes through so it's these four. Our trips are not always fun. As I mentioned before, Theron does still work full time and we're also constantly working on boat projects. Here we are working on reinforcing our dinghy davits, but also bouncing it back out with a relaxing bonfire. Okay, don't hurt me though. <laughs> All right, one second. It's getting kind of wavy out there. I don't know how we're going to make it back in our dinghy. That's what I was saying. Uh, as long as it's easy enough to get offshore. Yeah. Or off the it won't be too bad. It'll just be a little bit cold and wet, I'm assuming. Look at Than go. Making me a fire. I guess I'll go stand by it. Right, we just pulled up our anchor and Theron is dealing with a lot of mud up here. It's absolutely disgusting. I don't even know why I rinsed my hands off, but... Oh my gosh. We're uh, kind of like free floating right now, so... Oh, it's up then? Yep, I can see it. Finally! Gonna pull it the rest of the way up. <laughs> it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it, and I'm very happy it's not me. <laughs> I'll clean it up once we get to our next destination. We left Government Island to explore other islands and to make our way to Hessel, Michigan. We're having to motor again uh, because we're going through some pretty shallow channels um, or shallow areas. The channels are very tight as you can see the green and red buoys are right by each other almost so we just have to be very careful about where we're headed. But I'm navigating our Theron decided to put the Ray Marine in night mode or night vision so we can't see anything and we can't switch it back to day vision. So I'm using Navionics as our system. We're coming up to this crazy looking watch tower. I think this is it's a house. It's an island. And it's a house of some sort. Maybe it's a restaurant. It looks like a castle. 
It's super cute. We saw many islands along the way, but this one was by far the most interesting island that we went by. We also had another couple of great days in Hessel before heading back to West Michigan. Join us next week as we skip over the summer and share our journey to the North Channel. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up! Cheers and thanks for watching!